Many families have parents who've grown up speaking a language other than English, and often they fret about what language they should speak at home, and whether it risks damaging the child's development. Well, there's really good news about bilingualism, whether it's a spoken language or even a sign language. Casey Barris has been investigating. There's a couple things to think about. One is just the importance of being bilingual. So um, there are a lot of myths out there that um, um, you know, people should um, uh, you know, not teach their kids two language because they'll get confused or something like that. Or um, that you should only speak English in this country um, and forget about your home language. What we're seeing is that there's a lot of advantages to being bilingual. Um, and that's important to know. Um, with my population, um, one of the things that's critical, I think, is for deaf children. We're not just talking about spoken languages here. You can be bilingual in a spoken and a visual language like sign language. And just as there are myths about bilingualism in spoken languages, there are also misconceptions about teaching sign language. Sometimes with deaf children, there's been a move to, oh, we don't want to expose them to sign, we just want to focus on their ability to speak, to speak and just focus on that. But there's a lot of advantages, um, not only just linguistic advantages to acquiring a sign language, which can be acquired naturally, but also some of these cognitive advantages. So tell me about the advantages of being bilingual. Well, so for bimodal bilinguals, so people who know a sign in a spoken language, we find enhancements in mental imagery abilities, in face processing, and in spatial memory. For unimodal bilinguals, you know, who, people who know two spoken languages, we see um, basically advantages in executive control. So advantages in being able to inhibit information and to selectively attend to information. The bottom line here is the brain is being stretched, whether you're using two spoken languages or a spoken and a visual language like sign language. Spoken and visual languages happen in different parts of the brain, so they have different benefits. The other question parents often ask is when's the best time to start learning a second language? And if you're an adult, is it already too late? That's a great question. It's always the earlier the better for language. It doesn't mean that you can't pick up a language in adulthood, it's just harder. So the earlier you start, the better. And the more consistent you are, the better. And if you learn when you're older, do you still see the same benefit? Yes, actually you do. Particularly, I know for the bimodal bilinguals, you see, if you're fluent, you have to become fluent in the second language, but then you, you, you see um, enhancements in those same areas. At what point does someone become fluent and see those benefits? There's a, a wide continuum from just knowing a few words or a few signs to being able to carry on um, a very long conversation and give lectures in your second language. We don't know exactly at what point the advantages come in. There does seem to be a range so that the more you see these advantages, 